I'm in with Perai Ahmet, the new leader of Haringey Council. Congratulations on your new elected post. Thank you. And you're going to tell us about yourself. Can you tell us about your early life and how you got into politics, where you were born? Sure. So firstly, let me apologise. I've got a bit of laryngitis, so my voice doesn't usually sound like this. Um, so I was born in Wood Green, um, and I've lived here all of my life. I did move to Tottenham only a few roads away a few years ago, but my family um, were, were raised in Wood Green. My, my parents came to this country in the 1950s and 1960s from Cyprus, and settled first in Hackney and eventually um, moved to Wood Green in the late 1960s. So I've been um, primary school and secondary school in, in Wood Green, and now I live in Tottenham with, with my own family. So, Wood Green Girl, born and bred. I mean, what schools did you go to? So I went to Earlham Primary School, and I went to um, what was then known as White Hart Lane, now known as, as Woodside High. And from there on, where did, what did you do? Yeah, so interesting, because um, I left school at 16, more or less, with no qualifications. Um, I wasn't the best behaved at school, and um, like a lot of young people, of my generation, I was more interested in partying and hanging out with my friends really. Um, Wood Green being one of our major social destinations. So I didn't leave with much. I went to work for a year and a half in a sports shop. And then pretty soon I realised that actually this wasn't sustainable and I needed to do something a bit more tangible in my future. So I went back, I retook my GCSEs, A levels, and I did a degree in, in politics first time and then I went on to do my first master's degree in human rights and when I, when I finished that I, I got a job working front line with the long term unemployed in a scheme in Tottenham and then from there on I worked at the College of North East London mainly focused on the long term unemployed and getting people back into work and then I went to work with Connections North London which was a, a well it was a, an organisation that was across the whole of the UK but Specifically in North London, I was working with young people within the care system and working as a personal advisor, supporting them with all aspects of their life, really, um, but also their jobs, education, training, and other, other things as well. Um, so I did that for a few years, and then eventually I came to work at Harrogate Council, actually, in 2005 as a young person substance misuse commissioner. And what I did there was... I designed and commissioned services for young people around substance misuse and was then what was known as the Drug Alcohol Action Team. From there on I went to work in Camden also as a, a, a commissioner of children's services as well, on to Croydon Council as a head of um, children's commissioning and contracting and then on to Merton Council uh, um, where I, I did some work around um, procurement and commissioning and then ended up as a trade union rep, which I did for seven years. Whilst, whilst being a councillor, actually, because I did become a councillor in 2014. So whilst I did that, I was working at Merton Council as a, as a full-time trade union rep for, for Unison. So now you're back home in Wood Green and in Haringey. I mean, it's a great achievement to be the leader of Haringey Council. I expect you didn't even dream of that when you were younger. No, of course not. For, for my parents' generation, I mean, if my parents left school at, my mum left at 11, my dad may have been even earlier, you know, they, they grew up in Cyprus, weren't, neither were formally educated, and they came here, mum was, mum was a machinist, um, doing piecework machining, which very, very, very typical and usual story for women of that generation from Cypriot backgrounds. My dad was a welder, he eventually went on to own um, a couple of small businesses, a cafe and then a cab shop. But for, for my parents, any achievement would have been working in the council, let alone running the council. So I'm, I'm not sure mum can even quite get her head around it now that, that I'm actually le leader of the council rather than an employee. I mean, now you're the leader of uh, Haringey Council. I mean, it's a big role for you now because you've taken it on at a very difficult time in uh, world society. I mean, we've got a pandemic on. Yeah. Uh, there must be a lot of problems you're going to see now. There are, absolutely. I mean, it is post-pandemic. One of the reasons I did, I did take it on really is because I feel I've got the skills, the experience to be able to do it. I've, I've been a councillor for seven years, and within that time, I've, I've, I've had 
various cabinet roles. I've been cabinet member for environment. I've been cabinet member for adults. I've chaired planning and I've chaired uh, the overview and scrutiny committee. So I bring a vast amount of experience to the role. And I think what I also bring um, is, is a passion, you know, a passion for Harringay, the place I grew up in, and also a commitment to wanting to do things slightly different. And by different, I mean, you know, working with residents and, and making sure that the resident voice is at the of everything that we do. And while you're taking on this role, you've got your family life as well. I have. <laughs> I had a baby end of May last year, so a real lockdown baby. She's now 14 months. Um, it's, it's been a wonderful year, you know, so although it's been absolutely challenging on so many levels, and it's been so difficult having a baby under these circumstances, you know, like many parents, I can say when you look at that little face, everything just seems okay, you know, the world, the world seems fine for well. that split second. Well, thank you, Per Ryan. I wish you continued success and uh, a happy family life. Thank you very much. Thanks.